Good morning, St. John's. I hope everyone is doing well. Every Sunday before our worship service begins at 10.30 a.m., uh, the clergy, Anne and Sarah and I, get together and we say a prayer uh, just to prepare our hearts and to invite the Spirit of God to um, dwell in our sanctuary in the midst of our praises and uh, so that we can all grow together and encounter God together. And uh, this past Sunday, as we were, the three of us standing at the altar, and um, Sarah was celebrating the Eucharist, uh, you'll remember if you were there, uh, there was a beautiful child that was running across the steps up in the uh, chancel area. And uh, I was thinking to myself, at one point, as I was like watching this child, and Sarah said the, said, um, made a mention of the Holy Spirit in the Eucharistic prayer, I thought to myself, wow, what if this is the Spirit of God manifesting in a little child running around us, encircling us as we call God into our midst? And, uh, and all of a sudden, this little child became m even more sacred than, than the child already was simply by being who she was. Um, but just this idea of a, a visible kind of manifestation of the Spirit around us in the midst of our community as we pray. Uh, there was something so beautiful and different about having that little child up there. It, it changed things and it made me um, connect personally in even a different way uh, with God in that moment. And that experience reminded me of something that Jesus says in Matthew chapter 25. It's a, an earth-shattering passage where he talks about um, that every person that we interact with who is hungry or lonely or in prison or thirsty or naked, um, anyone that has need that's in our world, um, someone who is um, marginalized in many ways, uh, someone that the world looks at and says there's no room for this person or this person shouldn't be someone that we should give attention to, that anytime we encounter people like that, that those for us, those are Jesus. Like Jesus is in our midst all the time. And so he says, whenever you feed the hungry or clothe the naked or give something to drink to someone who's thirsty, you're doing that for me, Jesus says. And I've been thinking a lot about this since this past Sunday. Um, this idea that we, we're constantly thinking about encountering Christ. We even say in the Nicene Creed, we look for... Um, um, Christ to come again to judge the living and the dead, this idea of a second coming. But what if Jesus is coming amongst us all the time, not just in some uh, apocalyptic moment in the distant future, but what if actually this idea of a second coming is Jesus showing up in our lives every day, not just the, the historic Jesus that we read about in Scripture, but the Jesus that shows up in the people that are around us, whether it's this child uh, that's running around in the sanctuary, or it's the homeless man that we encounter on the street, or it's that person sitting at our dining table at a family gathering who is quiet and clearly going through something very painful, um, or it's that kid at school that you're just kind of struggling to like and they're right there in your in your midst and you're just kind of going like, well, what do I do with this presence? These people that, that kind of shift things around us and, and in some ways make things a little bit uncomfortable. Um, what if that's Jesus showing up again, taking us out of those spaces where we feel like, like there might be complacency or the status quo staying and shaking things up just a little bit to cause us to um, grow in our compassion and our humanity and our love and kindness. Um, maybe, maybe that's Jesus coming back to us and keeping things real and giving us an opportunity to encounter him in the faces of those around us. So just a simple thought today that, um, that maybe you're going to encounter Jesus today. Um, and, uh, and what a beautiful thing to be looking for that instead of just thinking that um, Jesus is some hidden, mysterious figure that we'll never see with our eyes. I kind of love this idea that Jesus makes himself accessible to us in the people around us. Uh, it not only elevates 
people in our hearts, but it also makes God much more present and much more close. So um, I hope that you feel blessed today. Um, I ask for your prayers for me and Anne and Sarah as we lead you, that God would give us wisdom in uh, the kind of the pacing of St. John's. Um, but I also pray for wisdom for you, St. John's, as uh, uh, parishioners, because this ministry, this thing that we do together, it takes all of us being one community, loving one another, welcoming all just the way we are. And I thank you, St. John's, for being the church that you are. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday.